Suffolk County's Marine Environmental Learning Center, located in the town of South Hold, Long Island, is home to the Cornell Cooperative Extension Marine Program's Shellfish Hatchery. In an effort to educate the public and to restore the local shellfish population, a unique program was created, the South Hold Project in Aquaculture Training. This program teaches its members how to grow shellfish in aquaculture gardens. Out here in the Peconics, brown tide, which is a, an algae species that is what we call an invader or an evasive species, we also call it a harmful algae bloom, came in here out of left field, had never been around before, came in and devastated the Peconic Bay system. If you have brown tide and you have scallops with a two-year life cycle, how many years of brown tide do you have to have to wipe out scallops if they die in brown tide? And the obvious answer is not very long. A year and two years, you're, you nail the coffin shut. So the only way you're going to jumpstart the system is to put the adults, spawning adults, back in the bay. And that's a major, major goal for the SPAT program for Cornell Cooperative Extension, is to keep culturing scallops that are going to be spawning stock to bring back the wild set. Aquaculture can supplement the system, but it can't replace the system. Nature has spent way too much time providing for the mechanisms for keeping the system alive. There's no way we're going to replace nature. But we can kickstart nature. In order to get a representative or even a decent amount of brood into the water, it's a lot of labor. The techniques are, are, are kind of straightforward, but the labor, that's a totally different story. It takes a lot of man and woman power. My first year here, we produced maybe 25, 50,000 scallop brood stock. With SPAT now, we can produce an order of magnitude greater than that. We can produce a half a million in pretty, actually in pretty short order. This is my scallop garden. I've got it hanging in baskets here. And I'll pull the baskets out of the water. We uh, grow a lot of scallops here. And I think about 99% of what we grow gets released. This is the basic gear for a uh, garden. Plastic bag, mesh bag. You can put uh, up to about 200 mature oysters in a bag like this. This bag happens to have scallops in it. And I probably have about 100 in each bag. Okay. Anyway, adding a few scallops to the garden. Pour them in there like that. And uh, then I'm going to close the bag. Uh, you know, we have our vineyards here, you know, the, the land is cultivated to grow grapes so people are going to have wine. You know, it's the same thing with the bay bottom. The bay bottom should be preserved and the environment, you know, uh, should be used uh, for, for, for the benefit of everybody that wants to sit down and have a, a nice bowl of uh, linguine with white clam sauce, you know, fresh clams. There's nothing in the world better. You know? And that's pretty much why we're here. We should be coming up to it. How are we doing here? Arma DeLuca, with help from SPAT members, pull out bags of cultured oysters from the community aquaculture garden. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're take these bags. They're pretty well covered up with growth. And because they're so covered like this, you can't get a good flow of water through them. And if you don't get a good flow of water, then you don't have a good flow of algae, which is what the oysters need to grow. 
Members of SPAT grow oysters, clams, and scallops in plastic mesh bags that are attached to floating lines. These bags need to be cleaned to allow for good water flow. The better the flow, the faster they grow. You see, the power washing doesn't hurt the oysters. In fact, it cleans them up and shaking them around is good for them. I'm sorting through them. As you see, these are dead ones. You can tell just by you can tell by the fact that the shell. This one just recently died, but it may it may have died because a crab got in there. Looks like the shell, the shell's been nibbled on a bit, or there are a variety of reasons why. You know, it's genetics comes into this, so it could be a variety of reasons. It's also what's interesting is that these oysters were all spawned at the same time. And they were all basically grown the same way, and yet you have some that have grown. Here's a live one. Here's a live one. They were spawned at the same time, and look at the difference in size. So genetics plays a part in it. Some, just like people, some grow larger than others. Hello, Bill. Dad, what are you doing? Well, I got, I got the panic call. Come down and get your oysters or else. No? Pat Rice, a member of SPAT, checks his oysters and transfers the juveniles into new bags. That's one year's growth. Well, I'm going to call them and pick out half to give to uh, Spats. And then I'm going to take the baby ones that are in this here. You see the, the mesh? How small it is? Yeah. I'm gonna put it in bigger mesh. Put them in. So these these were planted a year ago, August. They were just about the biggest my finger there. Right. Year ago, August. And that's what that's what they are now. Members of SPAT work together to help each other in the process of growing shellfish. Sometimes it's heavy work, and a helping hand and some friendly advice go a long way in aquaculture. This is a, what we call a clam box. It's nothing more than just four pieces of wood built into a, an open square. Uh, we're gonna take it to uh, Quarry Creek on a boat. <laughs> and we're gonna put it on the bottom at low tide. And we're gonna set the box into the mud. And all, all it is is just a, an enclosure that we can plant clams in. <laughs> And it'll give us a way to, you know, keep track of what's growing in here. Building boxes for predator protection in an effort to stop crabs from eating the baby seed clams is just one of the many projects that SPAT members participate in. People want to be stewards of their environment. They're not sure how they're going to go about doing it. They really are not entirely sure if they're able to do something to help the environment. But when they lock in an element that they know that they're making a difference, they become major stewards of the environment. And then once they've got that notion in their head, they'll literally donate their life to the cause. If, if somebody that's 70 years old comes here and can feel like they're a student again. They feel good and they're doing good because, you know, that 70 year old came from a lot of experience. The feeling that, first of all, as an individual, you do make a difference on the, on the planet and that you are individually important and that you are just a small part of the big group, that when you come together as a big group, the, the sum of all parts is huge. That is what makes the program sustainable. That's what makes the goal sustainable.
The Town of Southhold and Cornell Cooperative Extension have created an aquaculture garden in Goose Creek in an effort to restore the local shellfish population. One of the goals of the program is to grow an effective brood stock of scallops. This brood stock would be transplanted into local waters to restore the native scallop population. Juvenile scallops are cultivated in nylon bags attached to floating lines. These bags have been in the water long enough and it's time to haul them out. About 20 sets of these bags are pulled out of the water and brought back to shore to be transferred into larger cages. Members of SPAT and specialists from the Marine Center gather on shore to prepare for the process of transferring the scallops. The scallops have grown large enough to crowd the nylon bags, so it's time to spread them out. The bags of scallops are open and emptied into plastic bins. Thousands of seed scallops are now ready for the next stage. As each bag is emptied into the bin, they are checked for crabs and other harmful predators that would eat them. A crab gets in a cage and what it'll do, it can just live there and grow its entire life if, you know, if it's not monitored and not taken out at some point. So. As it gets bigger, it actually gets captive in the cage if the cage isn't monitored um, or the uh, container and then it'll just continue to grow inside and continue to feed. Thousands of baby scallops, about the size of a quarter, are spread out into cages. A cupful of scallops is spread onto a plastic tray. Then the next tray is stacked on top and scallops are added. Another tray is stacked and baby scallops are poured out. Each tray holds about 200 scallops. This process is repeated until five trays are stacked one on top of another to make a block or a cage. As the blocks are assembled, they are loaded onto the work float to be moved to the line. The process of transferring scallops is not easy work. Everything is heavy, wet, and requires many hands working together to get it done right. The work float motors over to the floating line and gets into position to drop its precious cargo. We got, we got about 200 in each one of these. There's four blocks, well, they're five high, uh, six high. The bottom one's got a brick in it, and then there are 200 in the next four, so that's 800, and then there's the top to it. So there's 800 per block. SPAT members work together to divide and spread out among the blocks of plastic trays about 50,000 baby scallops. Well, I re retired in February of 2001 after having been in the textile industry for 44 years, so in two years, well, two and a half years, I guess it is. We've uh, had quite a learning experience about shellfish and gotten quite involved in the program with a number of other people. Well, if we had if we had to get paid for this, none of us we'd be <laughs> moaning and groaning and probably do a lot of bitching, but. Uh, it's, uh, it's become really a labor of love. Uh, so we get all this done, we go home, we feel like we've got something accomplished and it's a, it's a great day. Yeah. A major part of aquaculture training is classroom education. Members are taught different aspects of aquaculture gardening and the basics of shellfish biology. Pretty much the first five lectures are really important months. Algae, broodstock conditioning, and uh, spawning, larval culture, post-set culture, and then systems, all are up well or down. That's a lot of stuff. And that's the first half of the year, is all the techniques of how do you grow shellfish f from scratch? How do you do it? You know, with just taking 10 adults, how can you make a million? The beauty of SPAT is that we're really on the forefront of the whole thing. So we're refining the, the, not only the model, but the whole, the whole technique of how do you not only run a hatchery, but how do you do it as a community group, as a big picture 
kind of thing. And you know, it's amazing how the funding part of this is it works so much to our advantage to have everybody working on this project because all that labor is is a donation to our cause. I said to you that the algae room is the base of the food chain for the hatchery. No algae room, no hatchery. Now, if that were the case, would you want to be growing, you know, lousy algae? You'd be wanting to grow the best stuff you could get your hands on, which happens to be this one uh, fits that criteria. You can't feed this to one day old larvae. Right? So you have, to, you have to know the components of the algae. This one you can't feed to larvae. You also can't, let's pretend this was brown tide. Oreococcus angiofragiferens. You couldn't feed that to anything. Here comes the little oyster larvae. And it's got this little hairy thing called the vellum. That's an eye spot, that little black dot. And the foot is right here. That's a, you could tell it was an oyster larvae if you recognized its eye spot. Other than that, you can't tell them apart. They all look the same when they're a clam, a mussel, a scallop, and an oyster. Until they reach the pet of eliger stage, they all look the same. They might look a little bit different, but it's very hard to figure out which one is which. This scallop had a chance to spawn twice this year, in the spring and in the fall. Okay, and it was based on the amount of algae in the water. It was the amount of algae in the water and the temperature were about the same at a certain time of the spring of this year and a certain time of the fall this year. So they've got what's called a bimodal spawning peak. Okay, and uh, algae concentration and temperature. So you can manipulate that in the hatchery all day long. And we had some bigger ones too. Boy, we, we just moved, we had a group of folks help out at Goose Creek and we moved 200,000 scallops off. Some of them were much, much larger than this. It was a lot of weight. <laughs> it was a long week. It was a long two weeks. We're not done yet either. There's more to go.